Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Liar. Things are really heating up now between Adrius and Lyle. These two really, really don't like each other, with Lyle just outright screaming at the newly coronated king. Uh, and now Adrius doesn't want Lyle to ever see Luvin again. And I don't think it's going to go over too well. So, anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy. Let me tell you for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right in. Oh boy, that's a draw my head, methinks. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> All right. I don't want you seeing him. I can't have your emotions interfering with this trial. You need to understand what's at stake here, Lyle. I understand what's at stake here. You need to understand that something crazy is going on. He didn't kill Raynor, and whoever did it so is probably still lurking around. And they might be out for your head. Edrius holds up a hand, not wanting to hear any more of this nonsense. That may be so, but this is the safest option right now. I'm giving you an order, Lyle. If I catch you in that dungeon again, I'll have you punished. With that, Lyle backs away with a solemn expression on his face. His tail is limp between his legs. As you wish. He turns and sulks away. Good dog. I'll tell him you said hi. Adrius throws his cape to the side and turns in the other direction. Come. The guards behind him quickly turn and follow him, trying to keep up with his fast pace as he walks down the corridor. Adris isn't even mad at Lyle. Lyle's loyalties to this kingdom are far too strong for him to break faith, but he can't let his emotions influence this trial. Descending the staircase, he reaches the bottom and turns around the corner. More stairs lead him down into the depths of the castle. It becomes increasingly more chilly with each step he takes. The floor is damp and cold along with the walls. Finally, they reach the bottom, a long hallway with cells lining the left side. It smells like spring water. There's a guard posted at the entrance. His eyes are tired and his body is slumped against the wall. He sees Adrius and instantly straightens up. Stay. The guards behind Adrius stand by the door of the stairwell as he continues through the tunnel. He always hated it down here. He came down here once to play as a child and let his imagination get the better of him. For the next couple of years, he was deathly afraid of these dungeons. Playing in the gardens was much more preferable. His mother enjoyed chasing him through the bushes and would even help him climb trees. She always had a few gowns that were covered in grass stains. Eventually, those just became her gardening clothes. Why is he remembering this now? He's been unintentionally thinking of childhood memories a lot lately. Given current events, it would make sense that they constantly try to breach the walls of his mind. He can't let those memories get to him, though. Not now. For what it's worth, he doesn't have a single worry when it comes to ruling. Whatever happens will happen, but as long as it's within his control, he'll prevail. He has to. As long as he keeps pushing through, no matter the struggle, He'll reach that goal. The hall stretches on into a dim horizon, almost bending. Each cell he passes, he looks inside to try and spot him. And with each empty cell, he grows more and more concerned that he somehow escaped. That would be impossible. It's stupid. After a few minutes, he reaches the last cell and looks inside. At first, he half expected it to be empty, but this was not the case. There he is. He's just sitting there on the dirty floor, slouching with his back against the wall. His eyes are distant and far away as he stares off into empty space. It's almost like he's looking at nothing. It's only been a few days. He can't have gone insane already. Along with all this, he isn't decently dressed. All he's wearing right now is his undershirt, trousers, and a pair of socks. Already lost it, have we? Upon hearing his voice, Leuven turns and looks at Adrius. His eyes are sullen and his face lacks almost all emotion. The pupils are a deep shade of purple, which causes Adrius a moment of confusion. He shrugs this off, having never paid attention to his eye color before. He wonders if that's normal for humans. Not yet. He shifts his legs slightly, adjusting himself. I imagine that upsets, uh, upsets you. Not really. It doesn't make me feel anything. Just knowing you're down here is the only assurance I need. Well, it's been fun talking with you then. Nice crown. He goes back to staring at the floor. Adrius is finding it harder and harder to keep his cool. His anger has reached its boiling point. If you think I'm going to be dismissed by someone sitting in a cell, then you truly have gone mad. Leuven sighs, drumming his fingers on his leg. I know why you came down here. You're looking in the wrong place, though. I didn't do it. Of course you didn't. He says this in a sarcastic tone. Leuven, I didn't come all the way down here to debate whether you did it or not. I don't need to. Then why did you come down here? What more do you want from me? What more can you do to me? Nothing, really. Only justice can get me what I want. Your nobility, as fake as it is, grants you a bit of safety down here. Not to mention if we don't go about this right, it could start a war. 
Punishing you before the trial would cause problems, but you already know that. I just wanted to make sure you're suffering. Leuven smirks for just a second before bringing his face back to its original expression. He says something under his breath. No, I don't think I can say that. What was that? Nothing. Just talking to myself. Okay. Oh, I should mention this before I forget. Your manservant won't be seeing you anymore. Leuven looks up, his attention being pulled in Adri's direction as if it were tugged on a rope. What? Yes, I've forbidden him from coming down to comfort you during your stay here. Leuven glares at him with a look of confusion. Manservant? Comfort me? What are you talking about? There's no need to hide it. Everyone knows about your scandalous relationship. Leuven lets out a little sigh of defeat. That's not surprising. I can't say I didn't see it coming. Honestly, I understand wanting to make as many friends as possible as a foreign political figure, but... Don't you think this is taking it a little bit too far? Adrius whispers this as, as if uh, whispers this at him as if in a mocking tone, and Leuven slumps more into the wall. Ha <laughs> ha! Shut up. At first, Adrius is taken aback by this miniature outburst, but he quickly regains control. That's no way to talk to a king, is it? Then again, you wouldn't know much about showing respect to kings. Says the one who constantly disrespected his father at every turn. Adrius shrugs his comment off, knowing it isn't true. He runs his hand along one of the cell bars, staring daggers at Leuven. You think we're the same, don't you? What? You believe that we are similar. Comparable. No. We're very different. The difference between the two of us is simple, but I'll dumb it down for you. Get on with it. You've played chess, right? I assume you do. It's a common strategic game in Aaron. If you're going to make a chess analogy in front of me, it better be good. Ah, who am I kidding? Even if it's bad, I'll still get amusement out of it. Quiet! As, if I, as I was saying, the difference between the two of us is that you see this as a game. To you, it's all a board of pieces to be moved, altered, and shifted. Pawns to be played, such as our dear friend Lyle. Lyle's a knight. You know, the horsey piece. And kings can be checked. Adrius interrupts him before interrupts him to continue his comparison. For you, the game can be shelved. You and the fools that you get to follow you with tails wagging can walk away from all this. And even if you lose, he gestures to the cell Leuven is currently sitting in, it won't matter in the end. It won't be remembered. You won't be remembered. Leuven stares into his eyes with curiosity. I never had that option. If I lose, if my piece on the board is checked, then I will be forever remembered for it. If I fail, nobody will forget it. Adrius backs away to leave and looks at Leuven. I hope you take solace in that. Adrius turns on his hoof and strides away. Before he can be out of earshot, however, Leuven approaches the door and retorts, And what if I was never even your opponent? Adrius turns back in the direction of the cell. Then the game is truly lost. With that, he continues down the long tunnel. Once he reaches the beginning, he turns to the guard standing at the entrance. There'll be no further visits from Mr. Reed. This is an order that needs to be relayed to the rest of the guard stationed down here. Am I clear? The guard salutes in response. Good. Adrius turns to the guard standing by the stairs. He walks past them, snapping his fingers. The guards follow behind him, their clattering armor echoing throughout the tunnel until all that's left is silence. Oh dear. Oh man. Part three. Wow, we're on part three already. Standing by the cell door, I wait to hear Adrius is out of earshot. I hear him mumble something about Lyle to one of the guards. He's really doing it. Damn it! I was trying my hardest to keep my cool while he was down here. Especially since he caught me while I was in the mind's eye. I reach down, grabbing clumps of straw in my fists and proceed to throw them at the, and throw them to the side in a fit of rage. I get on my knees and bury my face in my hands, hunching over and grimacing into my palms. Knowing I would still get to see Lyle while I'm down here was the only thing keeping me going. That and trying to figure out this mess. Uh, Tigran. Okay, what voice did I do for Tigran? It's been a while. Throwing a tantrum won't solve anything. Now all I have is this incessant voice in my head. It still sounds like they're talking to me through a wall, but it's getting easier. It certainly makes me feel better. I whispered this under my breath. For a time. If it makes you feel any better, I'm sorry that this happened to you. Oh, please, you saw it coming. You know everything that's going to happen. Not really. It's a bit more complicated than that. I stand up and walk over to my bed, sitting down on its hard surface. 
I wish I could warn you about these things. Really, I do. Guiding my avatars is like taking care of a plant. A very annoying and needy plant. They constantly require things, and if I give them something wrong, they die. That's reassuring. I understand you miss him, but you can't let this sway your resolve. I know, I won't let it. I just wish I didn't have to be away from him. He's practically the only person I have left to talk to, besides you, of course. I am well aware. I lay down on my back, staring at the cracked ceiling. Do you feel as if you've grown dependent on him? No! It's nothing like that. It's not like I need him or anything. I just... Well, shouldn't you know? You've been watching this whole time. You know how I feel about him. There's no response at first. Do you love him? Of course! No. This isn't an interrogation. I don't doubt you. I'm asking you right here, right now. The voice becomes a bit more clear. Do you love him? I stare at the ceiling and wait before answering. I can probably read my thoughts or something and know exactly what I'm going to say. It seems impossible. Even irrational from an outside perspective, but yes. I love him. Good. Use that. You can't let these things stop you or get in your way. I sit up from my resting position. You're right. I can't let this stop me. I just hope that Lyle is doing alright. Do you know if he's okay? There's no response. Damn, you're good. Please. I've been doing this for countless years. I learned from my mistakes. And if you're going to get out of this, you're going to have to do the same. But I'm getting better! I've been practicing using the mind's eye to see into the past for a couple days. I'm getting a little better at it, able to see different events here and there, but nothing specific. And it's all so far back that it has almost no relevance. You're not even close. Seeing into the past is one thing, but seeing something that's so recently happened, that is a monumental task. Then I'll keep working at it. Good. I sit down on the floor and close my eyes, getting ready to enter the mind's eye again. Unfortunately, time in the real world does pass if I'm just having visions. Time only stands still outside when entering the realm of the mind's eye. It's something like a sanctuary. I don't really have anything specific in mind. Right now, I just want to practice. I need to focus, like Tigran told me to. It takes a moment, but soon I feel as if I'm walking on air. Then the weightless feeling leaves my body, and now I feel as if I'm making, as if I'm walking on solid ground. It's soft, though. Grass? Yes! Ooh! Suddenly I feel warmth in my eyes are open to a completely different place. The body I'm living in right now feels different from Rainer's. But it also feels the same. The scenery is definitely familiar, though. There's no mistaking that this is the Castle Gardens. Some of the plants are different from what I personally remember, but everything else for the most part is the same. It feels like a warm summer day, but the breeze is strong. Birds take refuge in the trees and chirp to their heart's content. Whoever this is, they seem to be looking around a lot. It's as if they're searching for something. It's not a frantic search, though. At one point, my vision is lowered and I can see the rest of their body. It's a female's body, which throws me off at first, but for some reason it doesn't feel strange. One would think the scenario would be weird, but I don't feel anything strange. It's as if I've lived in this body my whole life. I found that after a while, it starts to feel that way. The more times I've done this, the more I start to feel at home. I take my mind off of the philosophy of the situation and instead try to wrap my head around who she is. She's wearing an emerald green dress made of a light cloth. It reaches the ground in the back, but is lifted up in front, allowing me to see her hooves. They're small and dainty, but walk steady and firm. The fur on her body is a light brown. Am I inside the mind of the queen? It's a possibility. I'm pretty sure this person is a deer. She continues to scan the area, leaning over to look behind bushes. Where are you? She speaks in a soft, chiding manner, and it feels strange having this voice feel as if it's coming from my mouth. I don't think I'll get used to that anytime soon. She looks up into a tree, and through the leaves I can see someone. Oh, God, little Adrius. It's a young fawn. He's perched into the tree, looking down at her with a smiling face. There's no antlers on his head, and his cheeks are covered in little spots. His eyes are big, and the pupils shine like amber. It's Adrius. He's very young, though, about six or seven. His clothes are nice, and the shirt seems to be a size too big. He lets out a giggle, and his tense body relaxes. It's as if he thought he couldn't be seen if he was absolutely still. This is, all, this is also most definitely his mother. She crosses her arms, and I can feel the smile curling on her lips. Found you! That's not fair! His voice is high in pitch, but soft. Oh, and why is that? 
He goes to point at her, but quickly brings his arm back to the tree limb he's holding on to. He you were peeking! She laughs a sweet and happy laugh while shrugging her shoulders. Was not. I just got lucky. <laughs> he says this with an exaggerated attempt at sarcasm. You have to admit, it took me quite a while. She leans against the tree he's in. Yeah, it did take you a long time. I almost starved. He says this in a dramatic way, how a child usually would when exaggerating something. It's honestly surprising seeing him full of so much joy. I assumed he wasn't completely awful, especially as a kid, but it's nice to see him smiling. Closest I'd ever got to see to seeing that was a smirk. Can you hide this time and I seek? She steps away from the tree and nods. Yes, sweetie. You can come down from there now. Um... He looks down and a sliver of fear gleams in his eyes. I, I can't. You got up there this time without my help. Surely you can get down on your own. He, he peers over the branch again and shakes his head. No. She lets out a sigh and holds out her arms. Okay, jump down and I'll catch you. From that far away? He shakes his head more. Trust me. He hesitates for a moment, then does a weak leap from the tree, not before plucking a wildflower from one of his limbs. He lands in her arms and she catches his weight, swinging him around a little bit before setting him on the ground. Thanks, Mom. The small Adrius hops up and down a bit before running over to someone by, the, by one of the garden walls. I immediately recognize who's by the wall. Ah. Rainer is tending to a small bed of flowers. He's wearing a cotton shirt and a leather apron. He's covered in dirt and water. It's covered in dirt and water, but he still looks as regal as ever with his crown sitting upon his head. If I could feel my own insides right now, they would be twisting up into a knot. Seeing him again sends a rush of sorrow through my mind. But then I sense Elena's emotions. Elena or Elena, not sure which. They're warm and fuzzy. Father, did you see it? Rainer probably didn't see it, but he turns around and ruffles his head for... Of course I saw it, fuzzball! You weren't even scared, were you? Adrius looks off to the side in embarrassment. A, a little bit. Rainer looks down at him with a warm smile. That's okay. The important thing is that you did it anyway. I got you this! He holds out his little hand and the crumpled, and the, and the crumpled wildflower can be seen laying in it. Wow, look at that! It's even my favorite color! He carefully picks the flower up by the stem and holds it between his fingers. Since it's so important, I'll put it, I'll put it up here. He places the flower between his ear next to his crown. Elena picks up her dress and starts to walk towards them. How do I look? Adrius struggles to hold back laughter. It's <laughs> silly! Yeah, I probably do. Adrius points points out a few flowers and Rainer gets a little bit excited and starts to talk about them. He seems much happier and energetic compared to the calm and collected king I'm used to. Before the queen can get any closer, my vision starts to fade. All the scenery gets pulled away from my eyes as if it's being carried down a river. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, what caused that? I'm back in my cell, sitting exactly where I was before. There's a commotion down the hall and I can barely make out the voices. You get distracted too easily. Shh, I'm trying to listen. I lean a bit closer to the door, trying to hear better. State your business, please. I'm here to see Lord Leuven. It's Leif. Hearing his small voice is more welcoming than I thought it would be. I, um, wish to speak to him about something. Very well. D do you need help with that? I can hear Leaf grunt slightly. N no, thank you. I should be able to manage. If I listen closely, I can hear the pitter-patter of his taloned feet echo down the hall as he gets closer and closer. I get up from the floor and go sit on the end of the bed by the door. Soon, Leaf comes into view, and I can see that he's carrying an old book. Even to me, this book would be large, but for him, it's monstrous. It's bound in le... In le it's bound as leather that's practically falling apart, and some of the pages are falling out of the book, crammed in between other pages. He's holding it in his arms and sets it down with a big thump. Hello! He's looking down at the ground, and I can tell he's a bit nervous. Hey! What did you want to talk about? Oh! I spoke with Lyle a little while ago. About what? I'll get to that in a minute. You, um... You didn't actually kill the king, right? You're seriously asking if I would kill your king? I just wanted to hear it from you, okay? Okay, okay. You have to admit, it's not really looking to be in your favor. Lyle managed to convince me, but if I still believed you did it, would you blame me? He brings up a good point. We had our chats from time to time, but he had every right to assume I had done it, given how it happened. No, I wouldn't. Especially given the circumstances and everything that happened. Well, I believe that you weren't the one to do it. There's something wrong with it all. But enough of that. I've been doing a lot of research on those headaches you've been getting, along with that weird dream. Ah, uh, yes. This should help. Or not. 
Those, these books are usually heavily inaccurate and filled with harsh exaggerations. I try to tune Tigran out as Leaf opens the, opens, back, opens the book to the page he had bookmarked. That's good. I still do get headaches from time to time. The constant noise doesn't help. Really? It's so quiet down here, though. Not all the time. Oh, okay. Well, you were saying that you had a full recount of the death of our queen, correct? Yes. Along with the fact that it was from Raynor's perspective. Yes, it was from his perspective. Is there anything that says how to stop the headaches? No, there isn't. Right, medicine. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode. Oh, man, before I could finish it, I could think. Oh, man. Mm, this has been another episode of Liar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!